Today I'm going to be presenting a talk to you about some of the problems associated with the stigma around asthma. And for this presentation, I'm going to be pretending I'm an asthma educator. So that's a person, a healthcare professional, who's, who works with uh, patients one-on-one -on -one and tries to improve their quality of life with living with asthma. Um, and in this situation, you are individuals, friends or family, uh, of an individual who's living with asthma, and you've come to one of your weekly support group meetings. Um, because asthma can be a rather distressing disease, not only for the individuals living with it, but also the individuals who, uh, who are around the patient uh, because of the impacts it can have on their life as well. So, good afternoon everyone and thank you for inviting asthma educators to your weekly support group for friends and families of individuals with severe asthma. All asthma educators, including nurses, pharmacists, and physiotherapists, have the common goal of wanting to help our patients with asthma achieve the best possible outcomes for their health. Today's talk will focus on how stigma can be a barrier to patient compliance and patient health. Compliance refers to how diligently a patient takes their medication and follows their treatment plan. We want all our patients to be taking their controller medications, as these are the meds that help keep asthma well managed. So today we're going to follow the story of a patient named Jason from childhood to adulthood to gain some possible insight into your loved one's experiences with the stigmatization of their asthma. Jason has consented to the use of his medical history for the purposes of this talk and his name has been changed. So Jason was always this very, very happy child uh, in spite of his severe asthma. But when he entered elementary school, his mom felt that he seemed a lot lonelier and had this very poor opinion of himself, which she felt was due to his severe asthma. When Jason regularly needed access in his inhaler from his teacher, or when he needed urgent medical attention at school because of an asthma attack, he felt that his peers were watching and judging him. When his friends were playing sports and he couldn't join in, Jason felt incredibly socially isolated and left out. Once during gym class, Jason's symptoms flared up, but his teacher denied anything was wrong, thinking that he was just faking it to avoid participating. All of these situations described in Jason's medical history are factors that could have negatively affected his compliance. As a result, Jason is representative of the 50% of childhood patients prescribed controller medications who don't follow their treatment plans. During the very stressful times of middle school and high school, Jason felt his asthma was especially stigmatized. He said he felt really embarrassed by his asthma, particularly if he would have had to take his inhaler in front of his friends. Because, like 61% of adolescents, Jason had not disclosed his asthma to his friends. This embarrassment means that Jason's likelihood of always carrying his inhalers with him like he should, or taking his inhalers in front of his friends if he ever needed them, is much lower compared to someone who doesn't feel this embarrassment. But these attitudes are not uncommon for male adolescent patients. And Jason, like many other teenage boys, thought that he would simply grow out of his asthma. He viewed his asthma as this very minor, separate part of his identity, rather than this chronic, serious disease that needs long-term management. Today, we can help patients like the uh, teenage Jason by letting them know research shows 96% of teenagers would show no reluctance in befriending an individual with asthma which makes you wonder about the other 4%. So, six months ago, at 35 years of age, Jason completed a research survey created by his physician uh, as part of a larger research study, and he reported some concerning, some concerning facts that, his physicians, that made his physicians worry. So he said that he had at least three or more asthma symptoms daily. He had very poor control of his asthma, which means that uh, he's more susceptible to flare-ups and attacks and, and he can't really manage the symptoms. And uh, he has greater feelings of perceived stigma. So what that means is that Jason feels that he's receiving a lot of stigmatization because of his asthma. And this is especially bad because it affects three important things. It affects his mental health, his, phys his physical well-being, uh, as well as ab his abilities to self-manage his symptoms. As well, on the survey, Jason reported symptoms consistent with depression and anxiety. Depression and anxiety often occur concurrently or at the same time as asthma and can also negatively impact a patient's ability to self-manage their symptoms. So as a result of all of this, Jason's physicians uh, recommended that he see a peer support group 
start seeing a counselor, and they suggested that he also start seeing an asthma educator. Thanks to his asthma educator's continu continual reassuring, uh, reinforcing, and encouraging behaviors, as well as her continual feedback, Jason now reports significant improvements in his ability to self-manage the symptoms, as well his health, his health outcomes ha are now much better as well. So we hope that as a result of this talk, you have a better understanding of your loved one's experiences with the stigmatization of their asthma uh, throughout the various stages of their lives. We recommend that when you speak to your loved ones about how they're managing their disease, you ask explicitly about how they feel about stigma, whether they're perceiving any stigma, and how the stigma may be impacting their lives. And we also encourage that you vocalize your support for them and for their experiences, as that can always really help a patient uh, and, let them, and lets them know that you are there for them throughout their journey. We also recommend that you tell your loved ones to speak to their doctors about seeing an asthma educator, as we can help provide coping strategies and help patients manage and overcome the stigma in order to achieve the best possible outcomes for their health. So that's it for me. Uh, have a great afternoon and thank you for inviting me to speak.